Recording in progress. However, what is important is, is that the research must order, uncover Order, Moima, Moima, order, we are out of order, order. Uh, what is important is that research must uncover the impact of government policies and programs. This is the only way in which we are going to be able to transform South Africa's triple challenges and its fault lines. Honorable House Chair, there are many employers who continue to flout and undermine the labor laws. And some right-wing parties are mum and they're in a state of perpetual silence when it comes to condemning uh, employers who treat uh, the vulnerable workers with disdain. And hence the order was raised just now. Honorable House Chair, it is precisely people like this who make it necessary to have inspection and therefore the program of the department in ensuring that it massifies and improves its ability to inspect and assess the compliance with uh, uh, safety measures and also labor laws must be applauded. Uh, indeed, uh, Honorable House Chair, what is, quite import what is quite important is to appreciate the dualism in terms of uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, employment regime uh, informed by the fact that uh, there are those uh, instances where uh, workers will uh, be enjoying all the necessary mechanisms that the ANC-led government has put in place, uh, like uh, medical aid, uh, paid leave, so on and so forth. But also there are those workers who do not enjoy all any of these benefits. As much as some might be in denial, like the order that has just been raised, that almost all farm workers and domestic workers are black and many of them are female. That this is part and parcel of the legacy of apartheid that must be confronted. Honorable House Chair, the third point that I wanted to raise Chair, relates to the, the job market survey that was conducted in 2020, which inevitably confirmed and found that uh, women were particularly hard hit by the initial lockdown phase and school closure in terms of uh, uh, labor market outcomes and childcare responsibilities. Of course, though situation has improved and it did uh, improve, but it is important that uh, we note that indeed from this survey, it is quite clear that women still remain behind men in terms of reaching their pre-COVID employment levels in October. Honorable House Chair, it is important that uh, also uh, we raise to the fore the, 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 the fact that the new liberal logic of market forces is the solution to all, must not be allowed to flourish in this house uh, because uh, they are much more against the interventionist role that the developmental state must do in terms of protecting its vulnerable workers. What they want more is the facilitative role of the state. But of course, COVID-19 pandemic has taught them a lesson. And it is important that they appreciate the role that the ANC-led government has done in terms of cautioning the devastating nature of that. But more than that, Chair, they must also agree with us that indeed the, the first quarterly labor force survey uh, that has just recently been released on Tuesday. To us, uh, indeed, it's not a surprise because we understand that indeed the problems of the fault lines in our country, House Chair, is structural in nature and that uh, the structural factors behind high joblessness and high unemployment rate in our country were shaped during the darker days of apartheid. Africans were systematically marginalized, both spatially by forcing them in life in to live far from economic centers and institutionally by depriving, by depriving them of resources, formal qualification, and access to financial and other market institution. Honorable House Chair, the ANC has committed to turn the situation around. And I have no doubt that the minister as an integral part of the economic cluster will indeed ensure that uh, 
the situation that is confronting young people is indeed mitigated. It is important to understand that the chronic unemployment crisis of our country is not new. It is not the problem of two and a half decades caused by the stringent and rigid labor laws. The labor absorptive capacity of the South African economy was 50% in the 1970s and the 80s. It was negative between 1991 and 1993. Honorable uh, House Chair and members, we know that the department has a focused program on youth unemployment through programs like labor activation program and public employment uh, enterprise services, which is biased towards our young people. Furthermore, the support that the department is giving to the supported employment enterprise, which is much more biased towards uh, people with disabilities must be commended. And this is the reason as the ANC, we are supporting this vote. Indeed, the National Pathway Management Network to transition and pathway and pathway characterize and also highlight the fact that young people is an important and helpful intervention to them. It addresses coordination, integration, synergy and collaboration, which are some of the missing qualities in our program. Indeed, young people must connect to different platforms in the network where they can build their profiles, receive niche and opportunities to jobs, work experiences, and also income generating programs. Honorable House Chair, we know that the minister has been speaking about the national employment policy and labor migration policy. This policy will be able to sort of mitigate the tension within the logistic freight and truck sector. Last year, the deputy minister informed the nation that the policy will include new regulations around labor migration. The honorable minister Bitumel also said that as part of a larger project to develop a national employment policy, labor migration policy development is being fast tracked both to address immediate challenges as in the road freight and logistics sector, as well as to coordinate labor migration policies with South Africa region, Southern Africa region, and the continent of Africa. Indeed, Honorable House Chair, we hope that the implementation of these policies will be fast tracked in order to give certainty to workers and employers as well. As the ANC rise in support of this budget vote of the of, of Department of Employment and Labor, I thank you, Chairperson, as a submarine. Thank you, Honorable Mimang. The next speaker is Honorable Lont. Honorable Lont. Thank you, uh, Honorable Chair, Honorable Minister, and Honorable Members. Sushala. In preparation for this speech, I hear you, Chairperson. Okay. In in preparation for this speech, I feel of all distress that this ANC Honorable Chair, I am actually busy speaking, so it seems like my sound is not coming through as it should. No, I can't speak here. What's happening here? No, Honorable Chair, hey, you will come after the echo, echo. So, you are not here. No, 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 no. no. Inkata can't be sabotaged here. We want to Honorable debate Gwezi. this policy debate. Honorable Gwezi, let's allow Honorable Lon to come after Honorable Lon. I'll call you. You were not available. Honorable Lon, you can yes, you continue. Must be orderly, orderly. Sabotage, man. Sabotage, then. Honorable Lon. Uh, Honorable Nyambi, if you can just allow me and tell me how much time I have, or can I then start from the beginning since I've been interrupted from the start? Don't worry with your time, Honorable Lon. You are fine. <clears throat> okay. In preparation for this speech, I thought of all the distresses that this ANC-led national government puts South Africans through on a daily basis. Hunger, homelessness, poverty, 
and joblessness to name a few, and a root of this all, unemployment. When one draws these parallels, it becomes clear that the Department of Employment and Labor has led South Africa into a dark hole, and one this budget surely won't get us out of. South Africans are aware and understand that COVID-19 was a global pandemic and that it has ravaged economies around the world. However, due to the failed revitalization programs and an insistence on cadre deployment, this ANC-led national government has brought us to the highest unemployment rate since 2008, when the quarterly labor force survey started, conduct, started conducted by Stats SA. It is indicated that unemployment rate now it stands at 32.5%. And to put that into perspective, 7.2 million South Africans are unemployed. June is Youth Month, with June 16 being Youth Day. However, the youth of South Africa has not been spared by the wrath of the Department of Employment and Labor. How can we celebrate the youth when we cannot provide them with proper jobs or an education to thrive, particularly when the unemployment rate for 25 to 43 year old lies at 41.2%. And it's even bleaker in the 15 to 24 year old category. The beacon of hope for the Department of Employment and Labor on this front is that they cannot take all the blame here. And that says a lot if you have to shift the blame to others to look better. The South African education system has failed the youth. It is actually shocking that eight in 10 youth in grade four cannot even read for comprehension. And that's an indictment on this national government. Honorable Chair, just to give you an idea of how a higher education system and outcomes have a positive ramifications, I will quote the following. Those with higher levels of education had a higher, has a higher chance of receiving a full salary than those with lower levels of education. About nine in 10 employed graduates continue to receive full salaries compared to 81% of those with less than a metric as the highest level of qualifications. This shows a clear correlation between a decent education and a stable job. That is if the youth can obtain a job. But how can we forget about the labor aspect of this department with its one shining light, the CCMA, who is tasked with protecting labor rights and the enforcement of employment legislation. The enforcement is of the utmost necessity as without an efficiently run CCMA, our labor laws would be invalid. The reward for the CCMA having their budget cut, it's pretty clear that the national government is using these funds to bail out failing SOEs instead of actually repealing policies, laws, and regulations that choke job creation. The case in point, IPPs in the Western Cape, which with the right stimulus would lead to stable job creation. Even though your department has led us into a dark hole, it is clear that this budget has failed the workforce of South Africa. Allow me, the DA in the Western Cape, to bring some light to this dark affair. According to Stats Essay, the Western Cape has the lowest expanded provincial unemployment rate, coming in quite far ahead of Gauteng, almost 14 percentage points. The simple question becomes, why is it that the Western Cape is so successful? And it's a simple answer. The DA knows how to stimulate an economy, create an enabling environment, and do not try and micromanage everything from the state side. We understand that you need to allow businesses to do what they do best, not cadres. When an entity is clearly failing like ESCOM, which costs the local Western Cape economy 75 million rand per stage per day, you find alternatives. You don't, you don't keep on pumping billions into these failed SOEs. And who knows if those billions actually reach the entities where they're supposed to make the change. That is why the Western Cape plans to implement the Municipal Energy Resilience Project with the aim of allowing six candidate municipalities to generate, procure and sell their own power to rid themselves of the toxin that is ESCOM. I can only imagine the faces of my colleagues by the thought of a South Africa rid of load shedding. This will be a reality in the Western Cape very soon. This is why where the DA governs, they improve the lives, not only of the citizens in major metros, 
but also in the rural areas, allowing citizens to take back control over their lives and their livelihoods and do not depend on an inept national government who is failing at a promise they made at the advent of democracy. Remember the slogan, jobs, 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 let's get South Africa working. Recently, this seems to be more like an excuse than a promise. And we hope that the voters will soon realize that the only way to effect positive change is to get, get rid of an inept ANC run government and replace them with efficiently run governments led by the DA. I thank you. Honorable Ngwezi. Sisalo Sean Pegil. Yabinga Lela Guena, Lela Umfume, Lagba, Kulume. Don't disappear. Onga Kuluma, Babungwez. Yatosa Kulung, Tela Binga Lela Gongo, Shoshon Pegil, Babungwez. Namalung, Wonke, Alain, Ashesi. Covid nineteen has placed tremendous challenges on the world and our nation. We can choose between two approaches when dealing with this pandemic. The first will be to play the, the blame game for years and years as to why ruling, the ruling party comrades are looting, why infrastructure is in decay, why radical and populist movements are getting traction etc. The second will be to, will be to take a conscious approach to be judged on the great development of our business sector, innovations of policy and sustainable job creation that is underpinned by good governance and international best practices. Our youth are getting frustrated more than anyone because they are young, they are energetic and willing to work. As we speak today, more than 55% of our youth are unemployed. Companies are either retrenching employees or not taking any new employees. This concerns us as INCAT, as our youth have excess energy, which could either be utilized in a productive manner or a destructive one. INCATA maintains that dignity can only be brought through principles of self-development and reliance. We can only achieve a better, more productive youth a nation through the development of an employment sector that offers an array of labor and professional skills to accommodate our vast citizens. We also need solutions to ensure that the youth who are unemployed get assistance in seeking jobs. This will require the department to think outside the box. There is a need for innovative solutions because the unemployment crisis is bigger than ever before and it is threatening our youth in poverty. The government should consider further reductions in the tax burden on employers who establish and contribute to medical aid and provident and pension fund schemes for their employees. In this challenging economy, we believe that the government must extend more tax benefits to companies that provide training to their workers and to companies that hire youth in these challenging times. Corporate social investment is another avenue that companies are willing to develop if there is enough incentives and the government needs to make this happen immediately. We must take steps to protect our youth. Labor laws must be enforced that make it expensive for these companies to overlook our youth. We appreciate that the budget provides for compliance in inspections and that 90% of the companies that are non-compliant will be given notices and dealt with according to our laws. Based on the importance of this department, Honorable Chairperson, and in the protection of millions of our employees throughout the country, in Qatar, is a Sagala le patch of food. Coda is twice a good game. A sea Sagale Luba Campbell girl could present us in Koshaga. See Sagale Luba girl to Tugiswa is related to Abu Vigar and Avasarin's way to Aba England, your Kula Valum not to wait. Cooping the footwalker and Amatuba, Amaning, um, servants to address 
the unemployment ya bantu bagi tika kulugaza bantu basha. Sisi shilo kutia isagela stalo le budget food. Thank you. Niyagi support. Thank you, Orungwezi. Tia wawo, Orungwezi. The next speaker is Honorable Dutoit. Honorable Dutoit. Thank you, Aspara, Voorzitter. Honger oog is loer na papa as hy skemer aan sleep voor die huis binnenkom, hoofgeboe, moedeloos, selfverweid en selfskaan. Hy het nie moed om sy vrou en kinders in die oor te kyk nie. Hy het probeer, soos hy elke dag probeer, maar sy sogenaamde status is verkeerd. Hierdie is een algemene gesig in Suid-Afrika. How do you explain to a hungry child and expecting mother, a disabled lady, day after day of job seeking, job seeking, that you were again not successful because you are too brown, too white, too Indian, too old, too inexperienced, too overqualified, or the wrong gender to be appointed. A child can't eat BEE legislation, Minister. Discriminative action, affirmative action, doesn't provide him basic needs. Triple BEE doesn't pay the bills. Why do we experience such high employment rate in South Africa? It's not because, not because of a lack of skilled, able-bodied workforce. The blame is to be placed solely on the ANC's shoulders. Umaka, some of you will howl like faceless hyenas in the night. If this is not true, why does this bill allow for 35.8% of the budget, which totals to 3.8 billion rand to regulate the workplace and only 1.9 billion to provide support for work seekers? Hoe kom sien ons nie meer initiatieve wat die werkgevers bijstaan en beskerm nie? Die werkgever is nie die vijand nie, voorzitter. The employer is the answer. Overregulating is one of the reasons for the high unemployment rate in the country. Chair, why does approximately 25,000 schooled workers leave the country every year? Volgens statistiek Suid-Afrika is daar tans 39.5 miljoen mens in Suid-Afrika in die ouderdom van 15 tot 64 jaar oud, wat bekend staan as die werkende ouderdom persone. Daar was slechts 15 miljoen werkende persone in die land gedurende die eerste kwartaal van 2021. Daar is dan 7.2 miljoen persone wat werk soek en die totaal van so wat 14.1 miljoen mense wat werk gehad het, dit verloor het, en nie meer kans sien om die vernedering, die neerstelling en die gezicht te staar nie, of bloot nie financieel meer in staat is om een werksansoek in te dien. Die ewig stijgende werkloosheidskoers en vooral die uitgebreide werkloosheidskoers wat ontmoedige werksoekers insluit en gedurende die eerste kwartaal by 43.2% gedraai het, is die gevolg van volgehouwe swakke regering op alle vlakke. Onbuigsame arbeidswetgeving is een van die grootste hinderniste in die pad van ekonomiese groei en werkskeping in Suid-Afrika. Nie alleen is het moeilik om onbekwame werksmense uit dienst te stel, maar daar moet ook voordierend aan transformatie teikens voldoen word. Voorzitter, om bij te draad door die krisis, het die ANC regering soos een steeks donkie met oogklappe voor het gebeur om Kibaanse dokters, Kibaanse onderwijsers, Kibaanse werktuigkindiges vlug na vlug teen buitensporige en onbekostigbare bedra in te vlieg om kos van Suid-Afrikaanse tafels te verweider. Your skewed and selfish so-called historical umbilical cord is still dangling for Mother Cuba and it's costing South African lives. People are contemplating suicide, Minister, as a result thereof. Mechanical services at the SANEF rendered by Cubans the past five years totaled to 1.614 billion rand. Only 12 South African mechanics are trained by the Cubans in this initiative. Tell me that's money, money worth spending. In 2017, SA taxpayers coughed up 6.2 million rand to transport these Cuban mechanics and their luggage and presents back to their homeland. And according to an article in the University World News, universities are stigmatizing and alienating South African medical students who have been trained in Cuba as a part of a bilateral program, which currently trains about 40% of the country's future doctors when they return to complete the last leg of their degrees. This means that the full cost to train a doctor on a Cuban program amounts to over 2 million rand, where the actual cost in South Africa is a lot less 
at about 900,000 rand. Why don't we make use of our own tertiary institutions for training and empowering more of our own people instead of enriching Cuba? The 217 Cuban doctors that arrived in South Africa to assist with the Cuban pandemic, in spite of the fact that South Africa has its own unemployed medical personnel, cost the country more than 440 million rand chain. Minister Linduisa Sulu has imported two dozen so-called human engineers to allegedly resolve the water and sanitation issues for a mere 64 million. In closing, Jay, while we currently have qualified, skilled, unemployed engineers in the country that were not appointed, some because of their skin color, billions and millions of uh, comrade Cuba are uh, spent on them while South Africans die of hunger. Ribatla Khodirache, Richwerbe Hutlala, INC, Uabolala Banaba Africa, and to the Honorable Matevula of the EFF, farmers do not mistreat their workers. You are uttering political uh, uh, famous utterances, and it's untrue you are misleading the house. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. The next speaker is the Deputy Minister of Employment and Labor, Honorable Moloi. Honorable Deputy Minister Moloi. Thank you, Honorable House Chairperson. Uh, allow me to take this opportunity to acknowledge uh, the presence of our the Minister, our Minister of Employment and Labor, uh, Honorable Nwesi, and uh, uh, Honorable, I think Honorable Minister of Public Service and Administration, if he's still with us, uh, the Select Committee Chairperson, Honorable Chai, uh, Honorable Members of the Select Committee, and um, uh, allow me, House Chairperson, I think, uh, to further acknowledge the presence of the Chairperson of the NCOP, together with the chairperson, with the deputy uh, chairperson uh, of the NCOP, Ms. Sylvia Lucas and Ndade um, uh, Masondo. Uh, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, Dumela Mbakaichu. Uh, honorable members, reduced budgets uh, have and will impact on programs, not only in the annual performance plans, but over the medium term for the department and its entities. This requires a balancing act as we have to review some of our annual performance plan and medium term targets without compromising the seven government priorities as set out by the sixth administration. And this situation requires an integrated approach and collaboration and coordination across entities as well as other departments to maximize the impact of government uh, interventions. In terms of our outreach programs, honorable members, it is for this reason that the minister and myself have been involved in various outreach programs uh, to take services to the people in partnership with other departments. And the develop, uh, district development model is designed to coordinate uh, service delivery at local level and our departmental infrastructure of 126 labor centers, provinces led by the CDPOs, your chief director, provincial offices, the CCMA productivity uh, South Africa uh, offices, the services rendered by our ESA system, the UIF and the compensation fund services places the department in a strategic position to support the district development model. Uh, we reach communities in all uh, the nine provinces and the 52 districts in the country, uh, reaching out to poorer rural and remote areas. Ours is a demonstration of a doorstep service and reporting on the impact of our interventions and programs. The minister and I prioritized these outreaches, uh, which are in interactive contact sessions with the beneficiaries of our programs and providing immediate uh, feedback on the impact of our work. And to date, honorable members, we have visited all provinces. We, we've repeat visits to provinces requiring further interventions. I must mention that the impact of our visit is backed up with quantifiable data uh, of the claims uh, activated during the out, outreach programs, cases referred and resolved and payments made on normal UIF and CF claims, as well as COVID-19 tariffs benefits. 
So, Honorable Chair, House Chair, uh, we have traveled the length and breadth of the country, reaching out to the people with our services through partnerships and collaborations with other departments, integrating our service delivery. Therefore, for the budget implications for the year 2021 and 2022, I must say, honorable uh, members, that systemic weaknesses and long-term trends in the economy as we move away from mining, agriculture, and basic sectors to greater reliance on the tertiary sector, uh, such as finance, uh, which is becoming less labor intensive, uh, all these underlies uh, the growth uh, in unemployment. Uh, but even the tertiary sector itself has not uh, been immune to job cuts uh, as much as there has been a surge in, in new jobs and skill sets owing to the uptake of the fourth industrial revolution maintain, uh, to maintain competitiveness, increase reach, uh, profit, profitability and output. And our readjusted re budget reduced our budget by a total of 7.2% uh, uh, overall. And this is what the minister already has alluded to. And this, this situation will persist over the outer years for as long as the economy remains stagnant. Uh, the reduction on our budget impacted negatively on some of our planned programs and targets. Despite this, we managed to live up to the commitment we made in the 2019-2020 uh, vote uh, with the theme uh, protecting workers and jobs in the uh, era of COVID-19. With regards to economic recovery, Honorable House Chair, uh, and in response to the State of the Nation uh, com uh, address commitments, we remain determined to defeat the pandemic in the workplace and in the broader communities. We have made it mandatory uh, during COVID, and this will remain even post-COVID, that occupational health and safety committees must be established in all workplaces and all COVID-19 protocols must be observed and monitored by these committees. As government, we are committed to accelerate economic recovery uh, through our infrastructure rollout, public employment programs and training programs. We have repurposed our labor activation programs, training programs and our projects to respond to economic recovery uh, through inclusive and inclusivity and growth. Unemployment rates, honorable members, remain worrying, and this will not be resolved by nibbling around the edges, but by taking a huge step towards structural reform based on inclusive growth that allows for new entrance into the mainstream of our economy. Uh, with regards to our entities, uh, I will start with the compensation fund which adopted the strategic uh, approach known as compensation make easy. The COEDA amendment bill is currently undergoing consultations with stakeholders. The amendment bill will increase benefits and beneficiaries significantly. We are also finalizing the new employer classification model, uh, which reduces the total number of cases from 102 to only 13. And this is one of the main interventions to us strengthening the fund and addressing some of the historical challenges that the fund finds itself in. With regards to unemployment insurance fund, last year experienced, uh, it experienced a huge impact of the downgrade on investments, uh, which impacted on its revenue, uh, but nonetheless continue to disperse the normal UIF as well as COVID-19 tariff benefits. And several decisions were made towards strengthening the fund at the height of the pandemic, which followed investigations by the SIU and the uh, Auditor General uh, of South Africa's uh, office. We have acted on preliminary reports from this institution, and I'm sure honorable members are abreast with such developments. With regard to Productivity SA, uh, which has adopted the strategic approach known as the Change ad Agenda, the entity aimed to unlock South Africa's potential for sustained competitiveness and economic growth, to promote competitiveness and uh, uh, competitive uh, support for SMMEs and to expand the capability of the current uh, public employment services system and labor activation programs, including normal terms as a buffer against the loss of jobs. Honorable members, uh, with regards to the CCMA, uh, which has adopted the strategic approach known as Invuselo, the revival, uh, the entity continued to focus on the enforcement of the National Minimum Wage and the Basic Con Condition uh, of Employment Act, and in line with macroeconomic indicators uh, and its expanded jurisdiction. The CCMA has experienced an increased uh, workload 
And just over the, uh, uh, the first nine months of the 2019-2020 like financial year, the entity experienced a 17% increase uh, in caseload, which equates to almost 30,000 additional cases. And at the core of the CCMA's functionality lies the ease of access to services. So the need for the CCMA to, to reach and support vulnerable groups in rural and remote areas remains a priority. We are aware, honorable members, that there is a, a push from some employers to replace standard employment contracts, uh, including social protection benefits with contract labor in a shift to a gig-based economy. The CCMA and the department remains vigilant in this regard. We are also aware, honorable members, that it is becoming increasingly prudent for organizations and businesses to constantly reskill and upskill employees as digitization and innovation become the driver for success. Now, with regards to NetLeg, uh, it is focused on fast tracking economic recovery and creating and preserving jobs focused on infrastructure investment, the digital economy, and supporting the Africa trade agreements. NetLeg continues to focus on the future of work and strengthening labor market institutions, as well as bringing interventions to address challenges affecting youth, women, and people with disabilities. We, we do have what is called supported employment enterprise. Uh, it has been supported from the department through the procurement of PPEs, and we will continue to engage other departments to do so too, and will pursue legislation that makes it mandatory for government departments to procure goods and services through entities uh, of ours, such as the SEE. Uh, in conclusion, Honorable House Chair, let me uh, take this opportunity to thank our Minister of Employment and Labor, Minister Nwesi, for his leadership and for sailing this ship against the tide and heavy storms and causing Nwesi. And let me take, take this opportunity once more also to thank the, our DG, uh, the DGGs, the entities, and all the hardworking staff for their continued support at this point in time. I thank you for your audience. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Minister. Thank you. Thank you. House Chair, are you there? It looks like you've got some Please. few minutes more. We need to oh, like I uh, uh, yes, thank you. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. Is there a problem with the House Chair? If then, in the meantime, let Honorable Brother said continue until the House Chair return. Okay. Thanks, Deputy. Honorable Britain. Honorable, Honorable, Honorable uh, House Chair, uh, Honorable Brother Seth is not available due to load shedding. I will be taking part with your permission uh, on his behalf in this debate, uh, if you may allow me. Thank you. As long right, as you have arranged. Right. Thank you very much. Honorable Chairperson, Honorable Minister, the truth must be told. Every single one of the entities in this department have failed in their mandates. The CCMA is one such an example. Much has been said of this once fine institution that actually did its work in the past with competent and passionate people filling its ranks. It has, however, gone from a defender of all those involved in labor intensive enterprises to being a hollowed out shell of its former self. And it is now making a mockery of the labor laws of our country. At a time when South Africa's rate of unemployment is reaching unprecedented levels, this government is diverting much needed funds into vain attempts to rescue state-owned enterprises that have passed their sell-by date. And so the budget cuts resulting in moonlighting commissioners who are supposed to protect the labor force. And when these employees are vindicated, and they then want to take action against employers, the CCMA has got no budget to help them to ensure justice for themselves. Honorable Chairperson, a further knock on effect of the budget cuts can be found in the virtual realm. Services had to be cut and thus applicants must file complaints online. And that sounds good, <laughs> except that in the real world, that seems to be divorced from employees reality. Because in most cases, 
employees lack the resources and technology to do so. My colleague in the NA, the Honorable Bagram, has reported that existing human resources are expected to be stretched even further with high fatigue levels, leading to increased absenteeism and lower productivity. The recruitment process of all vacancies within the organization was placed on hold. This decision will have a huge negative effect, effect and impact on critical vacancies, skills retention and succession planning of the organization. This is just another example of a government that is completely oblivious to the plight of labor that are not loyal cadres employed in government. This is evident in the servile position they have taken with the unions, singing the tunes of their masters. Why? To hold on to votes for 2021. Through your honorable chair, honorable minister, in order to ensure a decrease in the always rising unemployment figures, you and your department must surely realize by now that the most effective way for government to create more jobs will not be the continuous appointment of inefficient ANC cadres. Honorable Minister, no. Job creation in South Africa will be the best served when our government starts to create an environment that is conducive to attract investment rather than implementing the ANC's policies. The security of investments into our country will lead to growth in the private sector and in so doing will lead to the creation of much more job opportunities than what government can ever create on the path of destruction that it is currently on. Honorable Minister, rather than to implement doomed policies such as expropriation of land without compensation, which were one of the main factors that led to South Africa being downgraded to junk status and thus scared away investors and led to thousands of job losses in our country. This government's policies must rather now start to show the world out there that we are deserving of their confidence. Government must stop to implement and to fail, our, to fail our people. And it must, as a matter of urgency, move away from implementing failing policies such as triple B, double E, cater deployment and expropriation of land without compensation. Our people deserve better than to be politicized by the ANC. We need jobs for our people. Minister, the time of change is coming, for sure. And the disgruntled workers of our country will come for you and the ANC. They will understand that it was the ANC that failed them. Excuses and promises will not keep them at bay. Listen to us. Listen to the plight of the employees in our country. Create jobs by stimulating an economy and by putting money into the private sector rather than to fit and fill the pockets of the ANC. Time for changes now, Honorable Chairperson. I thank you. Thanks, uh, Honorable Member. Uh, House Chair, Nyami. Thank you. Thank you, Mam Gwenya. Thank you, Mama. The next speaker is Honorable Dango. Once <laughs> ambassador, always ambassador. Ambassador Dango. <laughs> Chairperson, you don't mind well, if I keep my, 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 my video off because I'm having problems with uh, connectivity. No problem, as long as we can get the voice. Thank you. Honorable Chairperson, Honorable Minister, Ministers and Deputy Minister, Honorable Officials of the Department, Honorable Members, Fellow South Africans. The ANC supports Budget 31 of Employment and Labor. We are still in the midst of a global crisis, although some people here don't believe that they're trying to say that this crisis is over. Uh, please, I would encourage them to wear their masks, to sanitize, uh, to get vaccinated uh, if need be, because this crisis is not over. We are still in the crisis. The likes of which I was last seen almost 100 years ago. The Spanish flu in 1918, followed by the Great Depression in the late 1920s and 1930s. And how did they come out of the Great Depression? They did so by massive investment into infrastructure. We have seen the contraction of the economy that has resulted in job losses in excess of 2 million. The unemployment rate for African females is 51.4% in the Eastern Cape. 
and the unemployment rate for the population in total is 52.4%. The formal non-agricultural sector has shed 648,000 jobs in the last quarter of 2020. Employment losses were reported in the manufacturing, construction, and transport industries with 85,000, 74,000, and 38,000 jobs respectively. Moderate job losses were observed in the mining industry and with 6,000 and electricity industry with 3,000. Full-time jobs decreased by 541,000 and quarter to quarter. Whilst 560,000 jobs were lost compared to the same period the previous year. I'm quoting these statistics as evidence that while most of the, the, the vulnerable workers were hit hardest during the lockdown, the formal employment sectors suffered enormously as well. As a result, families could not pay rent or honor their home loans, car and insurance, uh, sorry, uh, and month names. And many of these have become destitute on hard times and living below the gap. Minister and Deputy Minister, in our country, uh, as ours that beset, beset by socioeconomic challenges, there are companies that were quick to retrench workers. Instead of seeking solutions in the face of the situation that the government could not be, could not intervene on the side of the workers. In his address to the joint sitting of the two houses of parliament on the 15th of October last year, President Ramaphosa outlined the economic reconstruction and recovery plan, which is a plan sound and around which social partners at NEDLAC have had consensus. We believe that the Department of Employment and Labor together with its entities such as NEDLAC must spearhead the decent work agenda. The 2018 presidential job summit set a target of 275,000. Our country needs to work towards the target and much more after the pandemic, which is not over yet. We believe that the Department of Labor uh, should actually undertake the role of enabler and facilitator to enable people to get jobs and to find decent livings. But being an enabler and a facilitator, we know, we, we know from experience that getting CEOs of companies to make agreements with the president is easy. But turning those pledges into reality is something else. The YES initiative is one such example. The CEOs promised government that they would absorb 1 million young people into the internships over 10 years, but to date only about 54,000 uh, have experienced and, uh, and, were, and jobs were created. The challenge of the economic recovery needs more than grand public pronouncements. It needs social compacts between the government and social partners that are honored by all the parties. That is why NEDLAC is an important forum that must be given the prestige and resources it needs to perform this facilitation role. One of the critical uh, achievements of NEDLAC was the recent agreements on the response to COVID-19, the agreements on the social and economic relief packages with social partners made the implementation possible. Surely fostering agreement democratically through dialogue is the kind of solution that we need to unite and rebuild our country from the devastation of COVID-19. The ANC adopted the theme unity, renewal, reconstruction for the year in order for us to be uh, believable. The story of renewal and reconstruction has to touch people's lives in a tangible way. When considering problems we face today, we need bold ideas and action. The proposals in this year's budget, for example, uh, uh, the social grants have become a real wall between starvation 
and survival of millions of households will decline in real terms over the medium term and the expenditure thereof. We must be thankful to uh, things like the Zondo Commission, which is beginning to expose some of the uh, problems and challenges that we do have. Honorable members, the legacy of apartheid injustices remain visible in the skewed participation and ownership patterns of the South African economy. These disparities are mostly defined by race and gender. In, an, in attempting to address these injustices, the ANC government has passed a raft of laws under the umbrella of black empowerment and affirmative action to facilitate greater participation and inclusion of, of the previously at disadvantaged groups in business and various occupations, both in the public and private sectors. The gains we have made cannot be denied. However, I would like to argue there cannot be any meaningful inclusion of black people and women without the transformation structure of the South African economy that we inherited from apartheid. I want to argue further that in its drive to increase the percentage of black and women owned companies that the supply of goods and services in the public sector must lead to, uh, to, uh, to the developing of that particular sector. The weakening of the state benefits uh, very few people. Since black people and women bore the brunt of apartheid economic and social policies, South Africa needs to transform the public policy framework in order to address the long-term policy that we actually deal with. And I want to talk to the opposition. The opposition must start be be behaving as a critical partner, a critical partner indeed, but not the pattern that discourages investment from coming to the country, but to putting out negative statements and negative attitudes all the time, that is not going to attract investment. If the opposition had become, a, and I, I emphasize critical partners with all other, uh, the, the, with the, the governing party, then I think we can get to a point where we can attract the kind of investment that is needed. I think we must bear in mind that the agricultural revolution created jobs. The industrial revolution created jobs and gave rise to trade unions. This technological revolution has made unemployment systemic throughout the world. Have we actually looked at how we're going to gear a re-gear? And I think we have our education system to look at the creation of different kinds of jobs for people. We can't train people in what we had um, trained people for in the past. Uh, lots of my uh, comrades and colleagues have said lots of things. All I want to do is emphasize them and not go any further. I thank you very much. Yeah. Great ambassador. Deputy Chair, you- Is Honorable Nyambi not available? Then we can ask the, the minister, the honorable the minister to conclude the debate for us. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Comrade Deputy Chairperson. I guess all the minutes left are mine. Yeah. Uh, I, must, I must inform- Almost according to my discretion. <laughs> <laughs> I must inform the House, a, a major initiative underway is the development of a national employment policy and the national labor migration policy, which are being finalized for public comment. The promotion of the labor market stability and sound labor relations has been central to the mandate of the Department of, 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 of Labor both to promote the decent work and conditions conducive to investment and growth. For example, the department extended 31 collective uh, agreements to non-parties covering more than a million uh, employees, improving their conditions of, 
of, of service. Four bargaining council concluded COVID-19 related collective agreements, ameliorating the effects of the COVID-19 in their sectors, as well as ensuring that the workers were paid during the lockdown. Let, let me also thank uh, uh, all the honorable members for constructive inputs on the budget of employment and labor, which we have just tabled. We, we take these comments um, and proposals, we take them very seriously. Um, Honorable Ngwezi, together with the Honorable Chai, and the same sentiment has also been raised by Honorable Dango. You are spot on that uh, on blame game, blame game is played by the losers as the winners, I mean, remain focused on the issues, on the issues which are at hand. And all of you have raised something which is right by appealing to the employers not to be trigger happy uh, in this difficult climate when they are dealing with the retrenchment. The main trust of the opposition criticism which I've heard here today seem to be that government is either don't care and about the plight of the workers or incompetent in its response. This narrative simply does not stand up to scrutiny given our history. Let me, let me point to the following. The unprecedented scale of income support provided to laid off workers by the UIF during the pandemic, the expanding, expansion of the Occupational Health and Safety Labor Inspectorate and targeted response to health and safety threats in the workplace during the pandemic, the strengthening and the enforcement of the decent uh, work laws and regulations, which leaves us say, with the DA, uh, DA's tired call to deregulate the labor market, despite research which indicates that the South African labor market is not overregulated. Meanwhile, you know, let me assure the honorable members that uh, the department is committed to strive to simply to simplify our regulations, laws, and even procedures. What we will not do is join the opposition members who call for deregulation in the race to the bottom for the workers' rights and conditions, a nostalgic yearning for the slave labor relations of the apartheid past. Hence, if you're listening to their brother, Honorable Dutoit, he does not want I mean, the regulation of the labor market because they triumph when workers are working in slave conditions. That's how they made profits. That's why they are rich today. Um, it's because they've been using slave labor. That's how they've been treating our people. As a department and as a government, we will continue to espouse a vision of decent work, uh, health and safety, social protection and improved wages in line with the ILO and the international best practice. And our immediate mission is to protect, our immediate mission is to protect the workers. The, and we have to deal with the decent work and the jobs in the era of the COVID-19. And let me finally, let me thank the deputy minister, um, the staff, of the department and the commissioners and the executives of, of, of the entities led by the DG for their commitment and hard work in achieving targets and continuing to provide services in a very difficult conditions. Of course, we have already admitted in the various committees that uh, we are dealing with the systemic weaknesses which have been identified in our, in our entities. Thank you very much for supporting uh, this, this budget vote. Thank you very much, Chairperson and honorable members. It's honorable Nyambi Beg. Deputy Chair, Deputy Chair. Yes, Papa. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. much. Honorable Titi Nesi, the Minister of Employment and Labor. We also want to thank the honorable delegates because this is the conclusion of the business of today. We had two ministers and deputy ministers here today, we want to thank them, all the special delegates, the SALGA representatives for availing themselves for the debate. Once again, I, my sister, deputy minister, once again, 
members, thank you very much. It was quite a long day. So the house stands adjourned at this moment. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mama. Thank you, Mama. Thank you, Mama. Honorable Nana, Honorable Nana, when are you coming? Honorable Nana, when are you coming back home? What are you saying, Minister? Honorable Nana, when are you coming back home? Chocolate. He, he is at home. He is at home in the BA. He's an experiment. He's an experiment. <laughs> an experiment that went viral. <laughs> He's still the mayor. He's still the mayor. Bye bye, John. Thank you, comrades. Thank you. Thank you, Willem. Thank you, Deputy Chair. You're welcome, Advocate. The, the 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 load shedding kick kept me busy today. <laughs> I don't know whether you I don't know whether you observed that I had to change my gadgets in the in the end because it was the the phone was flat, the laptop was flat. Fortunately, I still had the iPad. <laughs> no, and, uh, it uh, it became very useful at the very push very important, very crucial time when uh, I was chairperson. And I'm sure because the load shedding was across the country, I'm sure he had the same problem in the end. Yes. Mm.